most young kids, they wouldn't think building an app was cool. Not only did I think that, I was that. I was a kid that like could write code, but also always onto the latest fashion trends. We have to make being a technologist and being in tech just as cool as being a rapper. My name is Idris Sandu, and I am the founder of Spatial Labs. All right, Idris, let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about how you got into tech. Being a kid that grew up in Compton, I started just reading a ton of programming languages. But my start really was at the age of around eight, seeing the iPhone first get unveiled. When Steve got on that stage and said, people who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. So we're bringing breakthrough software to a mobile device for the first time. I've always been in love with hardware. As a young kid, being able to see that open my lens to the possibilities of technology. By 15, he was invited to the White House, then consulted for companies like Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook, helping envision the future of AR. But a chance meeting at a Starbucks sent him on a whole new path. As I was at the Starbucks just coding, in comes Nipsey Hussle. And so we end up talking about how he was working on his new album, but he wanted to release it differently. So we created this experience using geofencing technology. Pull up tomorrow, the marathon grand opening of the world's first smart store, the world's smartest store. It allowed us to create this non-fungible value of clothing and merch. I just Sandu, log that name, Google that name. Nipsey really solidified me and allowed me to spread my wings. I just went on to work with artists like Kanye West, Rihanna, and Beyonce. Then came Spatial Labs, his incubator at the intersection of tech, music, culture, and humanity. Spatial Labs is a hardware first company. After you. <gasps> Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, so this is the Spatial Labs HQ. This is majority of where we incubate some of these ideas. We go from concepts to ideation here. What we do as a VC studio is not just pour money into projects that we believe in, but we have the technical abilities to be able to execute those ideas from concept to production and manufacturing. This is uh, a prototype of the upcoming wearable. I kind of print everything in house before we go into production. This looks pretty good. There's never been a time where we've been at the forefront of a technological revolution where we can all start equally. Idris believes the majority of conversations around the metaverse are missing crucial components, the input of minority communities, a connection to humanity, and a rethinking of what he calls hardware. Link One Chip is S-Lab's first major launch. Chip technology, it says, serves as the bridge between physical and digital realities. It's time to introduce the first interconnected network of digital reality. It's time to relaunch the future in a different way. Welcome to the wearable internet. <laughs> Link gives the power for physical items you own to have digital intrinsic value. Imagine a piece of clothing that you have being able to be registered on the blockchain as yours. And as you pass it from person to person, if it ends up like in a secondary market, there would be a transactional history, right? You would be able to see where an item was actually manufactured. You would be able to even lock an item if it was stolen. So most companies that say that they're working on smart technology really talk about the actual material, the breathability, you know? But there's no actual like tech layer in there. Okay, so how does this work? We created our own stitching and we have our embedded chip modules there. So the way that it works is you would actually get the Link hardware kit. So after I've created my account, you would select your model number, whether it was a sweater or a hoodie, and then I would start the activation process. Bring it in proximity, like that. So it then syncs to the network and it's activated. So our ecosystem is going to grow. There's going to be multiple different items that are Link enabled. What's up, what's up? So I was at the house earlier just prototyping some different form factors and I made a couple here. I kind of want to just like pass them around. I would think the wearable is probably going to be like the most used or adopted version of like the Link ecosystem. 
then we also have the licensing model. So we can actually sell our blanks to brands that would like to work with us and they can just be onboarded into the Link ecosystem. Link One Chip officially launched alongside partners Alice Gray, Pantone, Tidal, and Polygon earlier this year. What Link is aiming to do is becoming another delegate of what can store value. And how does that translate to minority communities? Yeah. Because that's so central to what it is that you're doing. You know, within minority communities, more specifically the black community spends around $1.13 trillion. And that money is not circulated back into the black community. The things we buy circulate, but the actual dollars don't. So what if now all the assets that people are buying assisted them in creating this new form of an asset class that could potentially even rival fiat? What's success look like to you? Success to me is really defined by our ability to assist people in not only using technology, but understanding the relationship that it has with humanity. It was never really about a numbers thing for me. I choose to do this because of the passion that I have for it to be able to inspire more kids to know that they can do this. The black community, incredible early adopters, but we, we are early adopters of things that are created for us. We're not early adopters of technologies that can help us be creators. And so, for the waves that are about to come, the AI wave, you know, the metaverse. When that wave comes, are we going to be consumers or are we going to be creators?